Hello and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. This week, I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. The sense of urgency regarding the coronavirus pandemic is staring us in the face as a country even more than ever before. Nigeria recorded its first deaths to the pandemic today and we are starting on that note. Today on the program, Lagos, other states come up with measures to defeat coronavirus as Nigerians express outrage over religious gatherings despite government directive regulating such gatherings. And later on the show, Central Bank of Nigeria, petrol union oil and gas in a big battle over 2.5 billion pounds as EFCC files counter-fraud suit against petrol union directors. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and deputy on the show is Jude Ibanoi. Jude Ibanoi is a lawyer, is a journalist, veteran journalist. Jude, welcome on GH. Thank you very much. Jude, we've been on Jude's um, <laughs> yeah. case for some time. Yes, I know that we made, uh, made great efforts. <laughs> no, like I promised from now on. Not, not many journalists like to appear on TV. Yeah, but okay. from now on, you get tired of my... <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, so if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Desperate times occasioned by the coronavirus are here and desperate measures have been devised to tackle the spread of the pandemic. As expected, Nigeria's commercial nerve center, Lagos, that's Lagos State, is attracting the highest number of cases. Hence, the state is leading others in, in taking measures to defeat the virus. As precautionary steps, Lagos and other states ordered closure of schools and a banning of religious gathering involving more than 20 people. While some religious organizations complied, others did not, forcing many Nigerians to express outrage over the disobedience of such directives. In Lagos, it took some officials of the State Environmental Protection Agency, LASEPA, to enforce compliance. Let's hear the story as compiled by Abimbola Agbebi. Worship centers were the target this Sunday. The aim was to shut down churches and mosques that are violating the stipulated number of persons allowed by the state government. Scanty worship centers, empty seats, were the sites that greeted officials of the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. That's why we have about five services today. So when you go to the church now, we just see or gallery and dance, scanty, scantily populated. When you go to the chapel, the same thing. So I'm going to start another service. Here. You can see the one at the chapel, there are not many. Just go and see. The chapel is somewhere there. So we have to start this one now. And we have prepared another place in case we have more than 20. So we have prepared another place. So that's what we've been doing. So we are grateful for visiting us. Thank you very much. We are still going to stay, get to a state that we will even say we don't want any gathering here at all. Do you understand what I'm saying now? The governor is still going to make another proclamation. And definitely because people are hiding under that, that directive now. Eh, uh, that's 50 law, that you 20 law. Eh, she's the first time. Some churches were on the lock and key. Being the headquarters of the church worldwide, we have to comply because the pastor has given directives, the government has given directives, you know, we are citizens of this country, we have no choice than to follow. Okay, so presently nothing is happening? Nothing is happening. You can see everywhere is locked. For those that had to worship, it was a long prayer session for victory over the spread of the pandemic. <laughs> For the few mosques visited on the mainland, there were apparently no activity. Impressed by the level of compliance in the state, the enforcement team took its advocacy to the street on the need for every resident to stay safe. 
stay in your houses until government pronounce that it is okay to do so. Now, in Oshu State, government officials also had to move around to enforce the ban on social gatherings in places like churches, mosques, and clubs. TVC News' Rafiu Ahmed was in town to monitor the situation in the southwest states. Oshu State government on Saturday issued an executive order banning all forms of gathering, particularly in churches, mosques, nightclubs and other social gatherings. To ensure compliance, the task force visited many churches, mosques and event centers in Oshobo, the Oshun state capital. Some churches had complied immediately while those who were holding their services were stopped. Many of them claimed the information got to them late. We hold the service here for people around this place. It was only when you came you told us that there was another information that we must. We never heard of that. And immediately you came, we complied. Um, when we heard of the information, we passed the information to all our members that they should not come for Jumat, Tahajud, and uh, Asalatu on Sunday. But those that came here this morning, we have passed them to go back. And there's no Asalatu or to further notice. They commended the state government for taking the proactive step. But with the step the governor has taken to control the gathering of people, it will allow this thing to be under control. We want to appreciate our government, the good government of Osho State, for this proactive measure to ensure that we rid our state and our nation of COVID-19. We are in full support of the government. It's a very uh, commendable effort so that the coronavirus will not spread more than, uh, more than necessary. Special advisor to the governor on public health wants people to follow the directive given by the state government. The former directive was where well, there should not be more than 50, but it was reviewed by emergency executive meeting last night that all gatherings will be banned. So apart from um, churches and mosques, we would also ensure anywhere that um, public gatherings, such as those doing parties, um, clubs, or those kind of areas, so as to ensure that the um, coronavirus virus that is out there does not spread around. According to him, henceforth, no vigil, tahajud, nightclub, and asalatu prayer will hold in the state. Another critical area that needs attention in this struggle to contain the virus in the markets is the markets. According to TVC News' Sharon Ijasson, who went around some markets and shopping malls in Lagos, traders and customers are not observing social distancing, which is needed to stop the spread of the virus. The popular Oyingbo market in Lagos is known to accommodate thousands of traders and customers. I met with Chadi Balogun who sells fruits at the market. She laments the ban on social gathering and how it affects her business. She is one of those who are yet to come to terms with the reality of the coronavirus in the country. The government should not close down the market. Since the closure of schools on Friday, students that patronize us, they can't anymore. I sell fruits and it's perishable. I have almost lost all my capital. Parties have also been banned, so caterers that produce smoothies can't even patronize us anymore. Sales is poor. If the market is short, it will be very bad. A visit by TVC News crew to other markets and shopping malls in Yaba and Ikeja areas of Lagos indicated that sellers and buyers are not adhering to the need to maintain social distance of at least 1.5 meter. In anticipation of, uh, you know, things getting bad, you know, real bad soon, you know, because um, we have to work by the figures that uh, we, we are seeing and uh, things aren't looking good, you know. You know, this, these are habits that's, that's been formed um, uh, for a long, long time. The issue of social distancing has to go with 
enlightenment. Nigerians are used to close contact, you know, in, in everything we do. As the death toll over the coronavirus pandemic continues to rise globally, many people believe that markets in the country should be shut. Actually, if you close down the market, you have over 5 million people, trader, wholesalers, and even the retailers, even the consumers too. You know, they will have problems at home, they will have, even the small children, you know. Like yesterday, now, see people running up and down, you know, to get one thing or the other, under the aspect that maybe the market will be closed down. At the Alaja Mogaji market, popularly called Sunday Market, the Iyaoloja of Ojodu local council development area was seen enlightening market men and women on precautionary measures against the virus. We are the day and Sunday market are following the government's directive on taking precautionary measures. We ensure that the market men and women wash their hands, wear their masks to prevent the spread of the virus. This brings to the fore the predicament of most Nigerians in the informal sector as a country battles to put the pandemic at bay. The urgent need for more sensitization by the government and other relevant stakeholders on the COVID-19 and how it affects us as a country, as the reality of this pandemic is now on us in Nigeria, cannot be overemphasized. As many artisans, traders and other category of workers who depend on daily livelihood to feed their family, worry about how they will survive if there is a complete lockdown. Babajiri. The number of infected persons is increasing. Wow. What's going on? I, with Lagos, we, Governor Babato Ejide Sonwolu actually tried his best and with the Ministry of Health and other agencies when the first Italian man was admitted and for a long time they were able to manage the situation. He has been discharged now. And even the person that was admitted after him was treated and discharged. So, but we have a feeling that this thing is spreading across the country it's right now. It's spreading. And um, the bad news that we've received the last 48 hours is that this problem may actually be greater than we envisaged. Mm. And everything points to the fact that we didn't behave the right way. From the beginning, we should have stopped flies coming into Nigeria before now. Even some of the big friends of Mr. President, I, I, I saw some of them posting on Facebook, die-hard supporters of the president, urging that the, 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 the airports, international, the, flights. The, the international flights be stopped. But we didn't take action. We were waiting. It's like everyone felt, look, this thing it's not as serious as um, uh, being presented. Oh, some people actually even felt that no, Nigeria, it's not an African Nigeria, disease. Nigeria you know, was too hot, to it. Yes. too hot for it to survive here. Mm. And then we sat back when even the smaller strategy. countries mm. were taking decisive steps. We, we we chose to simply fold our arms, mm. and we had somebody had the cheek speaking for the federal government. He had the cheek to say no. We are not going to stop the Chinese or the Italians from coming into our country. Hmm. So what do we have? As the minister, I was listening to the Minister of Health today, describing this as an imported disease. Of course, that's what it is. It's an imported disease. If we had kept them at bay, we won't have the problem that we have on our hands. The biggest problem that we have is that a lot of these people had gone out, had been good with other yes, people. Yes. We talk about people telling them to go and, um, and uh, self-isolate. Yes, Self-isolate that is not effectively effective. monitored. And people have been showing symptoms. They are not surrendering themselves to, for treatment. Yes, they, they mm. don't want to lose their freedom. Yeah, yeah. You see, okay, look at, uh, everyone talks about Atiku's son. Mm. But what we are hearing is that he came back, he refused to self-isolate, and it was, was, was in a club on people. Friday. That, that's <laughs> a claim. Oh, I, 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 we, we yeah. cannot uh, substantiate that. But we know that there were big people. Look at the governor of 
Bauchi State, for, for him to have gotten to a governor. The governor has now gone to self isolation. To self isolate. Uh, and two of his uh, commissioners as well. Because they he, met he knows him. that he met with him. So even if we do not talk about club, it could, nobody knows if he was actually there. But he's a married man. So maybe he was not there. If we didn't, if they we spoke about talk Friday about the Jumat Jumat prayer, mm -hmm. chances are that he will have prayed with some of his friends and other people. Chances are that he will have met so many of his family so members and friends. So when people lack the discipline to do the right thing, to self-isolate at the time that they should, hmm. definitely this thing will spread. We do not have the uh, uh, resources in our, uh, in our health sector hmm. to deal with a serious problem. Jude, did we start this prevention too late? Yes, a little late. Um, I think um, enlightened individuals took the initiative and then let's remember that the president's daughter self-isolated when she came that's the report we heard yeah. she self -isolated. her mother tweeted yeah she okay. self-isolated not that she came down with any symptoms wisdom i had been in britain i had been in, in the uk spent some days there while this thing was on so on returning without even confirming whether she had symptoms or not she self-isolated pending when she could call out, if every other Nigerian had behaved that way, it would have saved us a lot of what we are going through now. But be that as it may, I believe that, um, like people are already commending the Lagos State government, I believe that they tried hard enough. Remember the um, Ebola case, where Fashion Lab Fashion took yeah. very decisive, he didn't wait for the federal government, he didn't wait for anybody, he took very decisive steps. And in fact, we halted it. Fashola was the one who saved this country from um, um, the cat cat catastrophe of um, Ebola, mm -hmm. which I'm sure Somolu is trying now, even if the efforts you know, came a little too late. But I am a little bit um, happy about the level of compliance. In my church, we didn't wait for all these enlightenment and all that. All workers in the church were on WhatsApp when they posted, please don't come to church. All church activities halted. No evangelism, no proclaimers, no um, church work and all that. Stay at home. Well, whether we started too late or not, we have started. Let us now look at how far we can take uh, measures to ensure that it doesn't spread beyond hmm. now. Hmm. Mama Jiri, what are your fears? Now, states are coming up with tough measures, and mm -hmm. the president's wife is even calling for a total lockdown. Do you share her view? I think we may eventually get there. A total lockdown? Honestly. How workable is that? Honestly, is either we go for it, or we end up like Italy. Hmm. See, the truth is, I was reading Governor Nasir Rufai's um, uh, statement is addressed to the people of of Cardinal State. You know, he doesn't mean words, and he's very, very decisive leader mm -hmm. in situations mm -hmm. like this. And he said he was disappointed that church leaders, many church leaders, and even Islamic leaders refused to adhere, adhere to the instruction that there were prayers, Muslim prayers, and there were church. Uh, um, services on Sunday. He then warned that if this thing should continue, if this disobedience to government directive continues, he will be forced to impose a total curfew on the state. Now, he has moved ahead to say, okay, markets, only those selling food and medicines can go to the market. Mm. And those markets will in fact be fumigated. So government officials will go into town. That's Nasir Eru fire for you. You can trust him in you such situations. Leadership. Yeah. When it comes to this kind of situation, you can trust him. You may not exactly like him it's, it's for that. other things. Mm. Uh -huh. You may not like the fact that he demolishes uh, <laughs> people's homes or all that. But when it comes to providing leadership in critical moments, mm. that's why I respect leaders. And I respect the way he has. Kaduna does not have 
You can't operate at Lagos House. But look at the steps that he's taking. That's what we want. We have a situation in which pastors, rather than some pastors, pastors of big churches, mm. rather than refuse to allow normal services to hold, went ahead with normal services on Sunday. Mm. And even a pastor that I know who has a background in medicine was telling uh, the congregation to hold hands and pray mm. in this country. Whereas the Vatican has been shut down. Mm. Mm. The Church of England is not uh, open to people to come and pray at this time. The Holy uh, Mosque of Kaaba is shut. Mm. What is wrong with us as a people? We want to show the rest of the world that we are more religious than the Pope. And, and so. we are stupidly, we are stupidly mm. taking actions that spread the virus. See, if government will I mean, take much more decisive steps than they've taken now. I'm all for it. In France now, because they are finding it difficult to tell young um, uh, boys to not uh, go to, go to club, uh, to not uh, go to the bar, they have rolled out soldiers to effect the lockdown. Because you would ask yourself, ah, this is peacetime. Why, why are all these steps mm. being taken? But those steps need to be taken so that we don't, we don't just kill ourselves. Mm. We don't end up all dying. Look at what Erufai said. He said, let each of us do our duty to prevent coronavirus from spreading among us. Failure to do so is to impose a death sentence on others. We can do better by acting in a responsible manner. Mm. Those who chose, those uh, imams who conducted Jumat on Friday against government directive, those pastors who conducted services on Sunday. They are not bigger than the states. They, 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 they have not behaved in a responsible way. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is because but, look at what happened. In, if we take the example of South Korea, mm. look at that set leader, what it cost. South Korea for a whole month had only 30 cases. Mm. And then someone was infected. Went to that, to the, that their religious uh, place. Worshipped with them like three times. Mm. Today, they are dealing with Hundreds of cases. Mm. By a thousand. Yes, yes, as I said, hundreds. Yes. Now, the state is so hungry because they thought they were dealing with the situation until someone guilty of aberrant behavior went and uh, allowed a woman, a woman who was infected to come and be mingling with. Uh, with, with okay. Uh, this. So they are going to put the, 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 the leader of the sect on trial. Hmm. It's, it's, it's accused accu of murder now. Hmm. Jude, now, do you agree that the state needs to be on total lockdown? Now, a lot of people have been looking at this that, oh, can we, can we stand this? Are we prepared for this? And you are saying we should self-isolate. In some areas in Lagos, let me tell you, like Lagos Island that they are living, most people, they sleep outside. Uh, one room, and you are talking about self-isolation. Where do you want me to go to? Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely um, very crucial that the government should examine um, that possibility and take steps as soon as possible. Let me tell you um, the challenges that, that, that are there. Um, like Jide has said, uh, you know, commending Erufa, but look at it from the other side. Some state governors have actually said that they are not going to shut down schools. I'm not sure we are aware that in Akwaibom and other states they say they are not going to shut down school, even at this critical moment. Why? It's, it's terrible. It, that is what is in the news today and it's worrisome that despite what is happening in Lagos, the state government taking decisions that some states say, well, no, we are not going to shut down our schools. Students are writing exams, some are preparing for SSC, preparing for JAM and all that. It's you know, of their life. useless excuses mm -hmm. and all that. But talking about total shutdown, let's look at what has happened in other places. Um, the government, in its wisdom, has tried to provide some incentives to cushion the effect yes. of this shutdown. Like mm -hmm. in, the, in the US, in the US. they made provisions for $1,000. But UK, they said between 500 and 1,000 pounds sterling, depending on how long mm -hmm. it will take. I understand Nigeria is considering 85,000 Naira. In my view, it is absolutely inadequate 
We don't even have that money. We don't even have that money. Well, like, I am not. The intention is good. But I'm even more worried that even if we have the money, given we'll the nature of we'll our corruption and all that, mm -hmm. how will you distribute that money? Mm -hmm. Who is going to handle it? How will you ensure that it doesn't get into the wrong hands? Yes. Who and who should have it? You know, and all of that. But holistically looking at this issue, mm -hmm. if we want to deal with these challenges, really, we have to let some of these governors and some of these people in authority understand that in situations like this, there are certain things, there are certain measures you need to take mm. which will impact on the human rights of people, their liberty and all that. Mm. But the law empowers you to take such measures. No major I'll, yes, I'll social. give you such instances. There's the um, Quarantine Act, which empowers the president to take measures to quarantine people that we, we suspect to have um, diseases that could create um, mm. epidemics. So we have it pandemic. already Yes, of law. course, there's quarantine law. Apart mm. from that, there are so many other laws. Even the Constitution at Section 17, Subsection 3, empowers the president to ensure that they safeguard the health of citizens. Mm. How they do it mm. is left to the president. So the, there are actually about three, four different laws that can come together to ensure the that people are used to yes, that, so that And the, the, the constitution went, you know, went further to state that such powers that accrue to the president also accrue to the state executives. So mm. these laws are actually... Um, okay, we'll quickly go on this break. When we come back, we'll stay on this topic. We'll talk more. Please don't go away. It's still journalist anger. We'll be right back after this time out. It's still your multi-award winning program, Journalist Hangouts. We're reaching you live from Television Continental here in Lagos, Nigeria. And we're still on that dreaded pandemic across the world. Yesterday, watching multiple cable news network, <laughs> the major cable news network everywhere is well, just, about, everybody is talking about. just all about yeah. this. And it's as if, you know, it shows God, the supremacy of God. Now, ultimately, Babajide, mm -hmm. yesterday for the first time I saw the level of compliance in some areas and we have a situation whereby in Nigeria we boast of having the largest auditorium in the universe. Mm -hmm. We don't boast of having the largest factories. Well, the we can't largest boast of the largest house. hospitals. Mm -hmm. What we do is that how big is your church? That's yes. the in thing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now the chicken has well, come big to is, your mosque. is your mosque. Mm -hmm. That's... It's, so what we are looking at now that some people still went and insisted they had services yesterday. And we know Lagos and Ogun states have been closely monitoring these two states because we've had cases, for most cases, from these two states. No, it, is, it was uh, difficult to take. If Baba Adeboe could go to Ebutemeta, uh, the former headquarters of the church, to go and do his service with just a few people, including your Desola, yeah. Pastor Desola, and the rest of them. It's like two and people. it was broadcast to online within, uh, mm. church Dope members TV. across the world. There was no reason for any service to have taken place at Winners Chapel in Nota. There was absolutely no reason in the world. No reason in the world because we have to tell ourselves the truth. What happened in South Korea could easily happen here. And unfortunately for us, we do not have the facilities to deal with this kind of shock when it happens. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in America today, the government is begging people want to do what is called elective surgery. Elective surgery is okay. Maybe you just want to remove something from your body that is not really time bound. Mm -hmm. They are begging them to defer such surgery so that they can, the, the, the they doctors can, can handle emergencies. emergencies. In UK, Retired nurses, nurses and doctors, doctors are being begged. In one country, they said more than 10,000 people that are here to write their final exams, medical exams. They, they are begging them to come back. And we are playing with this kind of thing. 
You are telling that, people to you know, hold and, hands. And also not to put pressure eh? on medical mm -hmm. personnel. We, we do not if we if it happens, we don't have the medical facilities. You say hold your hand. Yes, your body is the temple of God. Also, yes, uh, no, you know, we're we, why, why, against why are we doing this? I think that no human being is bigger than the states. The states. No. no human being. No. No. Even Louis the Sixteen, who, who called himself the Lester <laughs> I am the state. state. He discovered later on that he was in the state. No human being can be bigger than the state. No human being can stand in any church or the totem and say Lester Semois, I am the state. No, you can't be bigger than the state. And because you are not bigger than the state, if you infringe on the laws of the land, or if you take actions that can put the rest of us in danger, you deserve to put in the slammer. Hmm. You mm. deserve to be put in the slammer, mm. no matter how big you think you are. Mm. That is the thing. That is how governments are run everywhere else. Mm. In other parts of the world, look at Israel. Former presidents have been put on trial mm. to show that in nobody China. is bigger than the state. Mm. So this is the thing. Now, if those who have not even been privileged to be president, it then means that even the smallest judge can be made to put them uh, on trial. So mm. this is the thing. Jude, made to try them. On the final, it, should not, it shouldn't be happening. On the final, now, Jude, you were talking before when we went to break. We we're talking about things that we know that in Lagos now we might be getting the figure of 22, 32. But a lot of people, especially when President Trump announced um, chloroquine as a mere stopgap measure to stop this coronavirus, I went to my pharmacy the next day. The, the, the man told me that I. <laughs> the, 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 some people were coming and they were buying in packs. But I need to explain something that. here quickly. This issue of chloroquine is, is very, very critical and the public needs to be enlightened on this. The chloroquine they are talking about is not the chloroquine for malaria. It's a different brand, it's a different combination of chloroquine. It's not the chloroquine they use for um, your uh, normal malaria, malaria, old no, malaria yes. drugs is not that that is not it but um my my, my take on talking this, about watching our neighbors now yes yeah my take is that like i mentioned there's a need to educate ourselves on what needs to be done in their circumstances like this government needs to put out that information that if you suspect a neighbor a colleague, anybody with certain symptoms, mm. without confirmation that this mm. person, you need to, you need to call the police to say, look, I suspect my neighbor. This is usually some yes. people will not on they their not own self isolate. No, we are, we are, it's won't. not that mm. we, are, we don't have that nature. Mm. Even when I decide to no. self isolate, my Coffee. children may want to. They will not know Compressing. the graf gravity of, of that mm. of that situation. Mm. My wife may want to say, ah, "How are you? Food and all of that." Even when we decide, to show so solidarity. there's a need for the government to enlighten people that if you suspect a neighbor is behaving like to save the generality of the public, please call the police. Let that person be tested. At all. But mm. beyond all of this, there's, there are other aspects of this that I think we should quickly look at. Some 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 countries like Italy. Italy um, took the step to release mm. 85,000 prisoners. Mm. Yeah, dude. Our time is fast spent on this. <laughs> we, are, we have to move on. I would on have suggested yes. what Nigeria Oh, it's a running do. story. Yeah. We'll be back for it. It's a running story. Definitely, coronavirus is not disappearing tomorrow. But hope, mm. we pray and hope. <laughs> After more than two decades, all eyes will now be on the Supreme Court of Nigeria to deliver judgments in the case involving the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and the Union Bank of Nigeria and Petrol Union Oil and Gas over alleged 2.5 billion pound fraud. The case, which began in 1994, had been under the spotlight of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, but after judgments were delivered at the High Court and the Court of Appeal, the EFCC has filed a counter-fraud suit against the oil firm and three of its directors at a federal high court in Lagos. Parties to the suit are also in, on the tantalus for legal fireworks and verdicts. Jude, let me start from you again. Yeah. Now, this is a big legal battle. Yeah. Apart from being a lawyer, you followed the case for some time now. Yeah. Can you just break down this case in the simplest form yeah. for viewers? Yeah, it is a... I wouldn't say um, it's complex. It's not because the issues that led to this appeal are pretty straight and all of that. 
But the bottom line is that the judgment at trial and at the court of appeal were obtained fraudulently. The judgment at the court of yeah, appeal? Yeah, the judgment were obtained in error because there were certain peculiar facts in the case which were not put in the knowledge of the trial court and the court of appeal. Now, that to me is the biggest challenge. Who withheld those facts? Who withheld those documents? It suggests collusion somewhere, either within the bank or in collaboration with other external factor, um, fact, um, 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 parties. The, the, the claimant, that's the, the plaintiff, you know, there was clearly some collusion because for such clear facts not to have been brought before the court at trial and all that. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you why I think so. The documents that just came out and the facts that just come out says that PU, Petroleum Union, never had such monies in Barclays Bank. Mm. They claimed that they had the money, but Barclays Bank received that request say, we are sorry, this company had an account with us five years ago. It closed down the account five years ago. So how could they have presented a check of five, uh, um, um, 2.5 billion pounds on an account that, was, that they closed five years before, 1989, and we are presenting this check in 1994. They said, in the, you see, now these facts were presented before the court because nobody came forward within the bank to say, no, we did this. This, this company didn't have this account. So I, I don't want to join everybody in blaming the trial court, in blame the court of appeal. They adjudicated based on the facts they have before them. Mm -hmm. But now Union Bank has a perfect opportunity. Now that the case is on, thank God, Supreme Court had not decided before these things emerged. Now, under the Supreme Court Act, they now have an opportunity to hear those facts afresh, as if they were on trial. I'm going to give you sections of the Court of Appeal Act, cases. Okay, the Supreme Court can actually, yes, can actually start de novo. Look at, yes, not, not necessarily starting de novo, but now looking at you from the perspective that fresh facts, fresh documents have been made. It. They can assume them, they can examine them okay. as if it were a trial. Hmm. And mm -hmm. you see, if they don't do that, the only logical conclusion they can get to is they remit that case back to the mm -hmm. trial court to say, so retry this case trial. because mm -hmm. of this. Go and start this case de novo. Hmm. But Majide, who is saying the truth here? Yeah, that's, that's um, for the Supreme Court to determine. <laughs> but the facts are very clear. Um, CBN does not open individual accounts. It, 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 it does not do that. It is not in its practice to open an account for a company or for an individual. It's an account holder for government. So when people claim that, oh, we deposited this money into an account, into a CBN account, of course, it's not going to be difficult to, to, to discover that to be untrue because there is nowhere that it is done. It is the banker of government, mm -hmm. not the banker mm -hmm. of individuals mm -hmm. or banker of uh, companies. So that claim in itself is suspect. But you see, I'm happy about one thing because when it comes to the final court, most of the time, Nigerians can sit back and expect that justice will be done when it comes to the final court. And you, 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 you know that many times, too, people will say, oh, the Supreme Court had shown again that is the, the last hope of the common man and all that. So in this case, I expect the Supreme Court to show us who is saying the truth between these uh, directors of this oil company and the CBN as well as uh, um, the, the Union Bank. And I'm confident that that will happen. Hmm. Jude, hmm. now, 
when the uh, what's the significance for this counter suit filed by the EFCC against the directors of the oil company? Like he said, like Jide said, is to prove that everything was based on fraud. The CBN as the um, number one anti-corruption um, agency in the in the country had to join. In fact, I, I was very happy when I discovered that they were the one who was actually. Um, instituting this course, who actually um, started it, who, who actually took this case to the Supreme Court. Of course. That, that will give it a measure of um, credibility, a measure of seriousness, and all of that. And, it's, and the EFCC, like I saw some of the things they file, are quite very firm on the grounds they are filing those things. So there's no, there's no doubt that the Supreme Court will, 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 will do justice in this matter. But let's ask ourselves some, some serious questions. Our, if PU were so, were so sure of their case, did they make any attempt to execute this judgment to make, from trial to court of appeal and all of that? I think they couldn't find enough grounds to execute the judgment. So this is why it is good. This is the beauty of the EFCC going to the Supreme Court to challenge this case. But I also want to mention that for those who doubt that um, the Supreme Court cannot look at this case based on fresh facts, based on fresh revelations. It, it, they are just not aware. Section 22, Section 29 of the Supreme Court Act actually says if fresh evidence, fresh documents are presented, Supreme Court can actually say, let us see those documents so that we know that what was decided at the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, I mean, at the Court mm -hmm. of Appeal and Trial Court, we were fraudulently, fraudulently obtained. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, in a, in the a 2016 case, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court has said that if situations like this arise, we can actually intervene. It's called um, Elias and the uh, Echo Bank. It was a case that the Supreme Court came out very clearly that when the proceedings leading to a judgment mm -hmm. is such that that judgment will end in nullity, it was fraudulent. The court was misled. Um, the right information, the right evidence were not presented before the court. When the Supreme Court comes to that realization, they stated clearly in Elias and Echo Bank that yes, the Supreme Court can intervene and, 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 not, yes, and nullify that judgment. Yeah, and yet, Section 29, 22 of the Supreme Court has says that you can actually present fresh documents, fresh evidence before the Supreme Court to say, to, but, to buttress your point, if already you have highlighted the fact that this judgment was obtained fraudulently, these things were not available at the time, and they are relevant to that case. No. Not that you have presented something that transpired after the, 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 the judgment. Mm. If these things, if these documents were documents of actions that were taken after the judgment, it's a completely different thing. Mm. These documents have been there even, after, even before trials, mm. way back 1899. Mm. Now, some people have compared this case to the P and uh, P and D case, where some directors tried to defraud Nigeria of nine billion dollars. How? What's the similarity in both cases? No, uh, it's, it's, it's quite simple. It's just in the attempt to take money out of Nigeria. You can imagine the Fraudulent case of the P and I D. There was this attempt to take nine billion out of our country fraudulently. For the Nigerians, you know, conniving with foreign elements to try to take as much as nine billion out of our country fraudulently. Now, in this case, the the money that we are talking about here is two point five billion pounds. Hmm. This is clearly an attempt to to take that huge sum of money out of Nigeria fraudulently. So the cases are very similar because. There is no, no way that it can be sustained, that it can actually be proved that this sort of money was deposited with any bank, not just Union Bank, with any bank in our country. Because the attempt to say, oh, um, uh, CBN uh, kept this money for us, definitely uh, will fail. Because everyone knows that the CBN is not 
uh, a banker for individuals. He's a banker of government, you know. So when you look at the intention of the people behind both matters, the intention is to defraud. So you see that similarity, that similarity is granny. Nine billion in this case, and two point five billion. billion to but as we always say, the duty of determining who needs to benefit uh, from substantial justice mm. rests with the court, and in this case, the Supreme Court. Mm. So the Supreme Court will look at the matter and decide appropriately where the pendulum of justice uh, should go. And but in addition to that, um, mm. I think the government should show more interest in this case, mm. more, more than a passing interest, because the negative impact it will have on the economy is going to be so huge. It, should get that kind of money. it should not even be imagined, because it's like more than 50% of the nation's external reserve. But looking back at even the time the action was, um, the transaction was said to have taken place, mm -hmm. to show you that it, it, it clearly shows fraudulence, the entire Nigerian budget for that year, 1994, does not even come near what, what, it, what it claimed they wanted to, to, to withdraw. So we, government should show more than a passing interest because in the unlikely event that they succeed, you and I can imagine what our economy will be, well, that will be the end at, of the at this time. Not just the bank. All that mm -hmm. there are so many the individuals, so so yeah, many other uh, things are interested. So it's it, it, it's it's, it's something. Somebody is trying to buy it over. That no, it, yeah, it, it's something that should not be imagined. Mm -hmm. It's something that should not be imagined. You have a lot of uh, you know in a lot of the rural areas they have branches and. Uh, okay, 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 okay. It's still, it's still just not be the regular uh, urban Yes, they, they may not have um, um, modernized like. Some of the other banks was well, still a credible bank. It's still a strong bank, and um, uh, there is no evidence that it is distressed. So but, it's still a very. But, but they should go. Bank. The bank should actually go beyond this case to enlighten their customers because it's also a form of demarketing, mm. Mm. where the 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 respondents they are not respondent. They, they were the plaintiffs since they are they are going to respond to the. The, it's, it, it's a, they look at a situation where even if we don't succeed, we may have brought this the bank name, to a brand, new, yes, mm, we have brought it down, down. Mm. So the bank should also take steps to enlighten the public that look, don't panic. Yeah, don't panic. Mm. This is your deposit you know, that's safe. And yes, all that. and all that. It's, it's critical. It's the marketing. Mm. You know, they've resisted. There was a time the assets man tried to buy it, and uh, that effort was frustrated. So they uh, still have some die-hard shareholders who prefer that things remain the way, the way they are. And I, I, I believe that it still has many years ahead of it. When the shareholders de determine that this is the direction that they want the bank to go, they can, they can take that decision. Mm. But for people to want to take money illegally out of the bank, mm. I don't think it's something that uh, should be allowed to happen, and um, uh, justice, in my view, will be served at the end of the day. Well, most people also, uh, in addition to this, if, if the uh, council to Union Bank, if they do their homework and EFCC, they should actually bring their witness from Barclays Bank London to mm -hmm. say, this is the history of this transaction. Yes. This is the history so of this account. Mm -hmm. This is when they start. That they had an no account. Mm -hmm. they, this is when they closed their account mm -hmm. from 1989 to 2009. They, it's already they already listed mm -hmm. a staff mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Barclays Bank to come and give mm -hmm. evidence. Mm -hmm. In that case, if mm -hmm. they actually do that, if we, if we, no, we, we have to go now. To to be a short the yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you for coming, Judy Banoi. Yeah. We hope to have you. I'm looking forward to reading your column Anything tomorrow on this day. day. No, <laughs> it's not something I, I don't miss <laughs> every week. Yes. And BK uh, himself, we're back. Thank You're you back so in much. Lagos and I'm back on my seats. <laughs> so it promises it's to be a very interesting back. week. Yeah. <laughs> and that's our offering. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And also what journalists hang out on our platforms showing on the screen.
We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalist hangout at tvcnews.tv. Abayo Dili Uzubaku. See you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria.